setting up M Collective just for demo purposes can be quite daunting. There's quite a lot of moving parts and quite a lot of dependencies. To make evaluating it easier, we've created a demonstration stack using Amazon Web Services. Um, specifically, we use the new cloud formation technology. And to use this, you will need to sign up for an AWS account and you should already have set up your SSH keys and the other requirements for that. Once you're ready to get going, uh, make sure you're in the EU West region. Hit Create Stack and you'll be presented with a wizard that lets you set up a few things. You can give any name here um, with a URL that you will find on the documentation page for the demo. Just put that, demo, that URL in here and hit Continue. You'll be presented with a couple of questions. The passwords you need to supply here are basically for ActiveMQ. We've set up a brand new ActiveMQ instance for this demo and you need to pass protect that. So anything really matters here, it's, it's for your own, own use. You're not, you don't even need to know these passwords going forward. We also need one for the preset key for mCollective. mCollective has numerous data security models. The simplest one is a simple preset key and we use that in the demo just to keep the um, bootstrap quite simple. And you need to give it your SSH key that you've already set up earlier. Okay, when you hit continue, it's gonna tell you what's going on, confirm what it's doing, and just hit create stack. Now, unfortunately, this is quite a slow process. Amazon's current cloud formation method is to boot all of the instances one by one in series and as we're starting up six instances that can take up to 15 20 minutes at times so i'm going to pause this demo here and continue once that's done our stack has started you'll see it shows create complete if you click on resources there are one security group and six ec2 instances the most important information here is the ip address of the node that we designate as the machine to control the other machines from. If you SSH to that using the key that you've set up, you will land on the main collective node, and if you do mcping there, you'll see all the other machines appearing. Now, a key concept in collective is that you do your addressing based on metadata and not just on host names like before. Of course, in a cloud scenario, like for the case of this demo, host names are unpredictable, every time it starts they're going to be different and they don't really mean a whole much. So let's have a quick look at the metadata available. If you look at one of the machines using the MC inventory tool, you'll see first of all some software versions, times of a startup and so forth. You'll see which agents. This is contain logic that you expose over M Collective is on the machine and you'll see a whole bunch of facts about the machines. Now the facts come from Puppets Factor, they can also come from OHI, and they have a whole bunch of things like, for instance, let's have a look, there should be the availability zone, there we go, and if I ask for a quick report on the EC2 availability zone, you'll see there are machines spread across two different zones within the EU West region. You can do all kinds of other stuff, so let's have a quick look. Um, there's a fact that I've added to these machines called cluster. It just randomly puts machines into specific groupings. And you can see what machine is specifically in that grouping. Now, if you wanted to have a quick look at machines in a specific cluster, you can just do that. And so what we're doing here is we're using a filter on the fact cluster equals alpha. And this is, is used throughout. So if we want to do a quick test on the Apache service for, well, Apache isn't on yet, but let's do the, the M Collective service. You can see it's doing a status on the machines matching this fact. If I take away the fact, it will do a status on all of the machines. And this is a key concept because you don't need to know the machines, you need to know what machines, which groupings of machines you want to communicate with. So let's go ahead and do something like install Apache on these machines. 
We'll install it on first a specific cluster of machines. Now, what's happening here is it sends a request over the collective. Only the ones matching the folder will respond and they'll go ahead and install the package. Very key to, to what mCollective does is it reuses code from shares code and reuses code. So when I'm doing the package instructions here, in this case it's a sender's machine, it will speak to yum, I didn't go and write a whole bunch of yum code. I'm simply using Puppet's providers, and of course Puppet is cross-platform, it works on Debian, Red Hat, Ubuntu, AIX, HPU, it's all these kind of systems, and it does the right thing. So via that, mCollective gains cross-platform support. Now what you can see here is it's done the HTTP install on two machines. If we were to do status over here and we take away the cluster bit, well the filter bit, you'll see that only two of the machines has Apache installed. Okay, now we can, um, for instance, restart them. It goes, it discovers the machines and it tells you it's restarted them. Now, very key to this here is it doesn't show you verbose output, it only shows you a summary. If you were to do this against a thousand machines, restart the service, you don't want to have a thousand case, you only want to have the things that's out of the ordinary now. Since there were only two machines that I've limited with the, with the folder, and since they were both successfully restarted, at the end they're still running. It didn't bother telling me about the success, only about the failures. Now if I take away the folder, presumably we're going to have failures because not all the machines has HTTP installed. And we should see four of them that's in unknown state, two of them that's in started state. And the display is only the ones that it was not able to start the service on. If we go ahead and do the install again, first of all you should notice that I'm in running an install against all of the machines, including the machines that have already responded. And you can see very quickly the two that already has Apache installed response while the others are going on and installing the package. This is key because like Puppet, you want these actions to be idempotent and because I'm using the Puppet providers, the result is idempotent. I can run the install many times and it will just do the right thing. It, it won't try to reinstall the software when it sees it's already there. <coughs> Okay, and some are stopped and some are running. So it started everywhere. Of course, this is Red Hat machines. They don't start unconfigured software. And there you go. All of the Apache services are running. Okay, now so this shows you a little bit of the a little bit of the concepts behind it. Um, how we're addressing machines. I don't have to think about host names. I don't have to think about about the kind of traditional how do I name machines as much more suitable for the cloud and you can see you've got access to all of the normal stuff right now mCollective is a framework it's more like Rails is to Like, like Rails is to electronic commerce websites, mCollective is to a certain kind of application. When you've just installed mCollective out of the box, you don't get the whole much done. It's, it's nice, it works, you can send messages around, but it doesn't come with a whole bunch of functionality. The, what it is, is it's a communication and a framework, and it's a framework to build certain kinds of applications on. For instance, yeah, I've written a tiny little agent that just does a actually begin um, to a URL that you give and it sends you back a report. Now in this case I have a simple, a nice little tool that basically wraps the functionality of this agent and shows you the results nicely. But really you want to be able to do a, um, a generic kind of client to all agencies because if you as a, as a user write your own agent you don't want to have to always write the same client. So we've got a RPC client that 
produces documentation on the fly. This is for the service agent. And you can see you can do start, start, stop, and status. You can see what information it wants from you, and you can see what information it's going to send you back. And if I were to call this service, which is the agent, the action being status, it wants as input as service. See over there. And there it goes and it calls our calls out to our agents and it shows you results in a generic fashion. Okay, so that's more or less a quick demo of M Collective. There's not a whole lot of stuff inside this demo, but you can you can start playing around with the addressing, you can start playing around thinking about metadata, viewing the metadata and so forth. Um, there's one last thing I want to show you, and that is some of the reporting capability. If you use Munin, you might have a problem of building the Munin config files by hand all the time. It's a bit of a pain. Um, you need to know groupings of machines and all that kind of stuff. Now here what we're going to do is we're going to use the fact that M Collective knows the facts, it knows information about your machines and it can talk to all of the machines in the network and hopefully if I get this right we should have a very simple Munin output. Yeah, let's have another look. And there we go. There's our Munin config with the fact that I showed earlier, the cluster fact that groups our machines into logical groupings, whichever makes sense to us. So you can see you can very quickly go and fetch and query information. And if you just want to do this um, through some code. Quick one-liner in Ruby, and we're able to communicate with the entire network of servers, and it just does the right thing. You just want to know if this everything's are broken or not, and it shows you nothing is broken. Everything has good load averages. If you do repose, it shows you the detailed information. Okay, so that's a quick demo, um, and I hope it speaks to your interest in the product. Thank you.